Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Bob's Woodshop. This year has been my year of the stool. So I have made several like this, and this one is uh, one that I made out of Spectre plywood. And I like this one a lot, but I wasn't really crazy about was the angle on this. This was a seven and a half degree angle. And I felt it might be a little tippy, so on subsequent ones I changed the angle on these short stools to 15 degrees. All right. And after I made these, and this one I actually used uh, some veneering technique on, after I made this I figured, hey, you know, this is really a beginner's project. This is like a 7th, 8th grade project. And I wanted to increase the level of difficulty. So then I went ahead and made this one. And I made this one in order to be able to sit down and put my sneakers or my boots on uh, real easily. So I went from a three-legged to a four-legged, and I included eight rungs in this one, right? From there, I figured, well, let's increase the level of difficulty just a little bit more. And I'm just finishing up these two here. And one of the things I wanted to do was to continue with the theme of those short beads and long beads. So this was the first one that I had done, uh, again, using just a long bead and short beads. And in this design, I was going to use three, two, one for this. And I took these inside and I showed my wife and daughter and they said, no, 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 really don't like this. Let's do something a little bit more traditional. So I'm glad they pushed me. And, and the design we came up with this was we still have beads. We have a, a, a short bead, but we also included some coves here. Right, and I'm calling this shape a milk bottle, right? And I've got a long taper, uh, a bead, a bead here, and then another cove. And these came out really nice. These are uh, solid walnut. And this episode, I'm gonna show you why I went ahead to make these. So thanks for tuning in today. Okay, first thing first, I had to cut up some wood just some basic milling. Special thanks, big shout out to my good buddy Ivan Rock who supplied some of the wood for this project. So here I'm just uh, starting out with about a three by four uh, chunk of walnut and just doing some initial milling, getting the piece square and flat. So next step I had to do some resawing. I plugged in a new resaw blade on here and I'm just trying to cut up one and a half by one and a half squares and these are going to end up being 24 inches long. So straight milling, not a big deal. Got to make sure you got your dust collector on. I like the smell of walnut but it, it can be a little bit pungent and I don't want to breathe a whole lot of this stuff in so I do got the dust collector on. So from here I got to go over to my Bosch glide saw and I'm cutting the four pieces to 24 inches in length. I wish I had a longer outfeed table on this so that I could have put a stop block on there, but I don't. So I just measured and cut carefully. If you're looking for a chop box, I'd highly recommend this Bosch. It's a really nice saw and the price for the 10 inch and the 12 inches the same. So here I'm going doing a little bit more of the one and a half by one and a half inch blanks that I'm cutting up. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically using the same angles and size of the stool based on the old Walmart stools that we had. And here I'm just making sure that I'm marking the location of the holes correctly. From there I'm going over to my hole drilling jig for the legs at the drill press. I find it much much easier to drill the holes now versus trying to drill them and getting them exactly in the center once they're turned. 
So obviously, since I'm making two stools, I need eight legs. And again, it's a good idea to mark those whole locations. I did that with a little bit of magic marker. And prior to each one of these holes, I had to make sure I was exactly in the center of the, of the leg blank. So here's a little bit more of the same at a different angle. And again, the use of a fixture like this is just uh, the way to go, as far as I'm concerned. Get a lot more accuracy with this. So next step in the process is to mark the center of each of the leg blanks. Relatively simple operation. And from there, I'm going over to the lathe, and I'm laying out the, the parts uh, one by one. I did make one sample piece that I'm transferring those lines. Each of these blanks took me about 13 minutes to do. So in case you haven't figured it out, this is the really fun part of the project. Uh, I'm primarily a wood turner at this stage of my life, but I've made tons of furniture. And this is a piece of furniture. I spend most of my time at the lathe these days. So this speed here is at 4x speed. And when you're cutting duplicates like this, you have to lay out the exact locations of the top and bottom of each bead or cove. And then I'm using various tools here. I'm using a easy wood tools with a round cutter on it to make the long beads and the uh, coves inside. For the short beads I'm using a beading tool from Benjamin's Best at Penn State Industries. So once one of these was done the rest of them were relatively easy to do. It took more time coming up with the design for these than it actually took to turn and here's the first four. They came out pretty nice. I wouldn't say they're perfect, but they're pretty close. And I'm happy with these. So each stool has eight rungs, so I ended up having to make a total of 16. And these are really simple. These only really took about two minutes each. So I'm just really using a parting tool and a spindle roughing gouge here. A little bit of sandpaper and just making sure that I've got a 5 8 inch consistent diameter to match up with the holes in the legs. So once all the parts are done I started to do the initial dry fit and it's coming along pretty good. I like the overall shape, the dimensions are good, the angles are good and this all fit together very nicely. Next step in the process is to glue up some walnut for this seat. I uh, like using a lot of glue and I do this and you can see I pre-drew the circle on top of here and you know, relatively simple. From there I got to go over to the bandsaw the next day. Always wait 24 hours after a glue up and take it over to the bandsaw and cut out the initial shape. Don't really need a circle cutting jig here. As long as I'm close it's not going to be a problem because I'm going to put it on the lathe in order to get a nice profile on the top and bottom. So cutting those seats was maybe four minutes on each of them. Here I'm just taking a look and see how the profile matches and I'm happy with that. Now I gotta go and start drilling the holes in the bottoms of the seats. Using another fixture here, 
and since the other holes were drilled at seven and a half, I also have to drill seven and a half degree angles on the bottom of the seats. Again, this is a different fixture and makes the hole drilling process much easier and extremely accurate. So the key to this is just making sure that you've got the center line correct on the fixture as well as making sure that you laid out the holes in a perpendicular manner. I still have some holes in the bottom of the seats here where I use the face plate and I end up filling them later on with some uh, wood filler. Okay, so here's the dry fit. Everything is looking good, and I'm pretty happy with this. Everything came together very well. Okay, it's time for the glue up. These are coming out really nice. And so this is a dry fit. And what I've done here is I've labeled these rungs one, two, three, four. Because this starts at eight and a half, nine, ten, and ten and a half. And when I take them all apart, it's going to be easy to get it confused. I learned that from the first one. So let's let's take this apart first. And then we're going to take this apart. So the dry fit will together very well. It's easy to get this confused really quickly. Okay. So. so, my typical glue up procedure is I put a little bit of glue in a container. And I've got my little wet rag here. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue in each of these holes. All right, and I got a little bit of defect on some of these, so I'm going to put them down. <clears throat> and then I'm going to do that again over here. So this will be one, this will be two, this will be three. So I need a three. I'll put that three there. A little bit of glue in this one. Don't need a whole lot. little solder brushes are perfect for this application. Okay, so we wanted one, one, two. Wipe a little now. Save a little aggravation later. Then this is number four. These go on the bottom. Let's see, no defects. That one's a little loose. going to dry them all the way home just yet because I want to do put some glue in the, uh, the top here. 
turn this upside down. sure it's a level so we're gonna bring that over here now and I want to make sure I'm level here before that sets get okay, close right there that level line is good right there okay it's time to level off the legs in order to do that, I drilled a little hole in this piece of wood, and I've got to draw a line around each leg. And I got this little piece of wood in here just so it's it's level, and this will be the cut line. And since the whole thing was at a seven and a half degree angle. This line will give me really close where it needs to be. Okay, now we're going to do the step of actually cutting off this little bit extra that we don't need in order for all these uh, feet bottoms to stay flat. So I'm using my little Japanese pull saw to try to cut that line as close as possible. And it's as simple as that. So here we're getting down into the short strokes and I'm using my electric branding iron with my name and a saw and a hand plane on it. And it's really tricky to use this thing. You gotta make sure that it's on exact amount of time. So here I had to actually sand that a little bit and get some of that excess burn off of the work done. Okay, it's time for the finishing, my favorite part of the project. I'm gonna be using water locks. I used this on the other small stool project, the 18 inch one. Now I'm gonna do the same for these walnut stools. Overall, this project came out very nice. I uh, really like water locks as a finish. It's nice and easy to put on and produces a, uh, a very attractive finish. So I'm gonna keep on doing this for another 10 or 15 minutes and I'll be back when these are off, oiled up. So here's some parting shots. Here's a view of the before and after before putting the water locks on. And overall, I like I said, I really like this water lock stuff. Here's both of them finished. And I think they came out beautiful. As my wife and daughter say, these things came out beautiful. I'm very happy with this. So I hope you like this project. I really appreciate you spending a few minutes of your day with me. And hey, you know the drill. If you like my content, please like, comment, and subscribe. And please check out some of my other videos. I have flat work projects, turning projects, plus several restoration videos. And you know what Norm says, always remember to wear your safety glasses. Woodworking is tons of fun, but can be dangerous. So until next time, I'll see you on another episode of Bob's Woodshop. Have a great holiday season, everybody.